So this is the Antares 44 GS. This is touted as the world's best liverboard catamaran. Let's go and have a look and see if it lives up to its awesome reputation. So let's step on board this Antares 44 and see what we think of the helm. All right, so this is the helm of the Antares 44 GS. Um, there's a bit of a jump up to the seat, but there is a little footrest. So for shorter people like me, that's really handy. Uh, I mean, this, I love this helm position. It is so well enclosed and it is part of the cockpit. You're not separated from the cockpit, you're very much part of the cockpit, which is really nice. Everything is here, all of your controls are right here. Um, including your wheel of course and the, um, the thruster, all of your other controls and everything. Uh, so this is a perfect place to sit and do your watch from. The uh, screen in front of you is actually a hard screen with windscreen wipers, which is amazing. So when it is raining, <laughs> you're not compromising on visibility. That is something that we have found uh, several times with our, um, our enclosure, our cockpit enclosure. So when it's raining, we basically can't see anything, particularly at night. So the visibility is really poor. That completely obviates that problem, which is fantastic. You've got great ventilation here. You've got a huge opening hatch above and the same on the other side. So really nice ventilation coming into the cockpit, which is great, very important for me. And I'm just really enjoying this helm position. The, all the lines, I'm just looking around. The winches aren't within immediate reach of me right now. Um, so the winch, the main winch, which is a big electric winch is just here. And then the other winches are, are around the cockpit. So some of the catamarans that we've seen so far, almost all the lines run back to the helm position. That isn't the case here. You have to move around the boat in order to um, to get to the lines. But you know, that's, that's our problem. Very happy. So this is the foredeck of the Ford Antares 44. Apologies for the sunglasses, it is super bright here. One thing I would say is that these decks are super wide. The hatches, while they aren't flush, they are beveled. So there's not as much of a tripping hazard or a toe stubbing hazard as I kind of like would worry about. Another thing that's really uh, good to notice here is that the handrails, we always talk about handrails and grab rails, these are the first handrails that actually curve and go all around the cabin top. So you have full amount of grip uh, and you have a full amount of ability to stabilize yourself all the way around until you are at the mast. I think that's a really good safety feature, so I'm super happy with that. In addition to that, looking at things like the bow sprit and the way that this is entirely set up, it is a very, very sturdy looking boat and everything does look to me to be over-engineered, so that's a big tick box, super happy with that. Another thing I would say is that the guardrails come up really high. Yes, these guardrails are high. I think they're probably about 30% higher than the guardrails on Ruby Rose, yeah. so again, um, I, I wonder if you can specify these as solid rails, but in, in this, yeah, they are, they, and they're very, it feels a very secure space to be, so I'm mm. pretty happy with that as well. With my only really minor gripe being that there's a central winch and you cannot control all the lines from the helm position, this is a fantastic boat. If you talk to Beth, she says, quite clearly that most owners opt for placing the life raft on the transom. Again, a fantastic idea. This boat is absolutely hard to fort and in category one, we are happy to award the Antares 44 GS a perfect 10 out of 10. Now on to my favorite category, the build quality. And like a rat up a drain, the first thing I do is dive into the engine compartment. Now the Antares 44 is almost unique amongst catamarans is that the engines are centrally mounted. That means that you access them from inside the boat. They also have shaft drives. This allows the propellers to be skegged and protected. It is a fantastic arrangement. I would love to see more catamarans doing this. Opening a second floor panel again inside the boat gives you full access to all the filtration systems. Again, for access and maintenance, this is gonna be a really good and safe system. Moving on to the obvious electrical panel and systems of the Antares 44 GS, everything is well labeled. I do like to see a big and extensive control panel. However, this is further augmented. If you look inside and behind the units, you can see the level of care and attention that has gone into making sure that everything is well set out and well labeled. This is a sort of maintenance that I like to see, and this will make for very, very easy diagnosis of potential electrical problems. 
Now the finish of the woodwork and the joinery is fantastic and I think I summed it up very well on the day. Do you know what this reminds me of? What? Our boat. It's got the same, yeah. same catches, same woodwork. So the finish is durable and beautiful. You can see that this is going to last the duration if you are a full-time liverboard or doing an extensive circumnavigation or ocean crossing. Overall, the level of craftsmanship on this Antares 44 is superb. It is a testament to the long history that Antares have of producing fantastic boats back from when they were PDQ and now to Antares. Another perfect 10, 20 out of 20 so far. Well done, Antares. And now the obligatory 20 second pause while we showboat and tell you all the things coming up. As you may know, we were at the Annapolis Boat Show. What an amazing time we have. But we have so many more reviews to show you. We have all the top catamaran brands and we are going to give you the real reviews on all of them. So please feel free to subscribe. There is a little button down there. Click that and you will never miss an episode. Thanks very much. Let's start this very important category with a look at the cockpit which is arguably the most important space on your boat. Now I have to say that as fantastic as the Antares catamarans are overall, their cockpit is definitely not my favourite feature. I find this a really awkward space, those curved settees, that big table right in the middle of the living space and also those two upright uh, seating areas just at the stern there. I just don't see this as a particularly practical space. I don't see how you could comfortably lounge on those settees with your back resting up against something and your legs stretched out in front of you. So this is by far, in my opinion, the weakest part of this boat. And if you look at any other catamaran in the 45 foot range, you'll see far, far more superior cockpits. That all being said, this is a very safe cockpit. You could be very comfortable in the middle of this cockpit in any kind of sea conditions and you would be protected and safe. So that is a major plus. Let's move into the interior now and take a look at the galley. Now Antares do galley down, which is relatively unusual, but I think it works extremely well in this situation. The galley is really large, far bigger than any other galley you probably see in this size range. It's got plenty of storage, plenty of bench space, and is very beautiful as well. So if you're not a fan of galley down, I encourage you to come on to the Antares because I suspect you might change your mind. Now let's take a look and see what I had to say on the day. So this is the saloon and this once again is a really cozy area. What Antares do that I don't think I've seen in any other catamaran is that they have such a sense of, um, it's, it feels like a very traditional style in here. The wood is beautiful, it's very homey, it's very cozy, it's very warm and I think that this would appeal to people who are coming from monoholes because monoholes often use a lot of wood in their interior design and, and this kind of is reminiscent of that um, and it, we really like it, it appeals to our style hugely so we love that. From a more kind of practical point of view, um, the saloon is a L-shaped uh, settee so that there's plenty of seating and there's actually now in the new Antares um, model there is another sofa that Nick is sitting on right now which I really like because one of my concerns with the old um, setup that just had this L-shaped settee was that, if, and it sounds maybe a little bit silly but when you're living on a boat you kind of get into your own habits and Nick and I like to kind of really spread ourselves out in the evening, read a book or maybe watch something on television and that would kind of be awkward here because like I might sit here with my feet up but I don't have really have anything to rest against but then Nick you know you kind of it's more designed just to sit at the table like this but now you've got that extra settee where Nick is you've got that extra option so I really like that so the table also uh, converts into a coffee table so you can um, lower it as well and let you know in case you don't want it to be up so high and I think that we would use that setup fairly often and uh, you know, once again, the, the saloon is connected to all parts of the boat. You have direct connection to the cockpit, to the galley, uh, to the home station, 
and to the person actually at the helm because I can see the helm seat from here through a window that actually slides open. So everything is really well connected, you can talk to everyone. So this is the nav station and uh, this is a really comfortable spot as well. I can imagine on long night watch I could just kind of sit up here with my feet up and uh, just watch the world go by and you've still got really good visibility pretty much 360 there's a bit of a blind spot behind you but nothing that you can't do with pretty easily so you've got these huge uh, windows all over and you've got three opening hatches in the ceiling as well so I feel like at anchor uh, you would have pretty good ventilation I normally like to see some opening hatches that go forward because I feel like that's the best way of catching that breeze when you're at anchor so that would be the only criticism that I have of this particular space is that I would really like to have some nice forward opening hatches Leaving the galley, which is just behind me, you actually come, when you're walking forward, you actually come into the guest cabin. So the guests will be staying right next to the galley, which is nice if they want a midnight snack, I guess. And then they have an athwartship uh, berth, which is just behind me here. So historically, I've been a little bit skeptical about this kind of setup. Uh, however, you know, we stayed in a berth exactly like this when we were sailing with Nikki and Jason from Gone with the Winds and we loved it. It was forward and so you get all that breeze when you are at anchor. With the aft berth, sometimes you don't get the breeze because the hatches open it up into the cockpit. But here you've got um, two opening hatches, one above and one to the side. And as you can see, there's a breeze coming in sideways at the moment. Um, and so we really liked it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's relatively spacious. I think, I'm not sure exactly the dimensions. Uh, it looks like a kind of a, like a double. So it's not the biggest berth of all time, but there is a larger berth in the aft cabin, which I'm going to take you to right now. So there's two guest cabins, we've just seen the first one, and this is the second. This is an aft cabin, and this is a fantastic berth. Again, it's a thwartship, so it's a little bit different from normal, uh, but it's perfectly spacious. There are no less than five opening hatches in here. So I cannot see any scenario where you would need to run the air conditioning, where you wouldn't be perfectly cool at anchor. You can open five hatches in your guest cabin. I think that is fantastic. One, two, Three, four, five. One issue with the Antares is the guest shower room situation. The shower room itself is fine. It's got a separate shower stall now, which is an improvement upon the older models. However, there is still the issue of the shower room only being accessible through the forward cabin. So any guests staying in the aft guest cabin would probably have to use the owner's shower room. Speaking of the owner's hull, let's go and take a look at that now. First we'll take a look at the owner's cabin, which is very similar to the guest cabin. It is not an island berth, which is maybe a slight issue and something that could be improved upon. However, that does give you that little bedside table with the drawers underneath. So it's not all bad news. So here we are in the main cabin and uh, this is exactly the same as the other aft cabin, except the bed is... Uh, in the other direction. <laughs> I don't know what this direction is called, but it, it kind of um, is in the more typical direction of um, a berth. You still have those five opening hatches and you also have a television screen. I'm not sure how often we would um, use that. I'll show you here. <laughs> right there. So we can watch a bit of telly while having our morning coffee. And uh, this berth is so um, light filled and it is, there's Five opening hatches, which I know I've already said, but I just can't get over. I mean, that is just fantastic. I would almost buy this boat just for all the opening hatches because I love that. Walking forward now, you can see so much storage in the owner's hull. That is really important for liverboard cruisers. You need space to put all of your things. Moving towards the shower room itself now, it's got everything you need, a separate shower stool, a toilet inside the shower room, and obviously the sink and mirror and some storage. All I would say is that this is a slightly more cramped shower room than more modern uh, catamarans in the 45 foot range. So that might be a slight issue. As I said, generally speaking, you do get a little bit more space in this in a non-performance catamaran of this size. However, again, perfectly practical and once again, the quality of the finish is top notch. You also get the two opening hatches, which gives you really good ventilation in the shower room. So how are we going to score this very important category? This was a tough one for me. On the one hand, the cockpit really irritated me. On the other hand, that galley is just fabulous and the ventilation in the cabins is really fantastic. We're gonna go for a seven out of 10.
Category 4 sees us looking at statistics for the Antares 44 GS. She is exactly 44 feet in length. She has a beam of 21 foot 9, a draft of 4 feet and a displacement of 10.2 tons. Now don't forget that draft has protected skegs underneath those propellers. That's a fantastic thing. Now, one thing to note here, sail area, 56 meters square for the main and 23 for the self-tacking jib. Add the optional Jenica to that and you have 44 square meters. That's quite a large sail area, but with a boat of this size, you are not going to get sparkling speeds. So with an ICW compliant rig and that sail area coupled with that hull length, we are going to award the Antares 44 a 4 out of 10 for performance. Now category five sees us looking at the Antares and its value for money. Bear in mind these currency conversions are accurate as of the 1st of November and do not include delivery or local taxes. Now the base price of the Antares 44 GS is 950,000 US dollars. That's 862,000 euros and 743,000 pounds. Antares have a very, very useful website where you can spec the boat yourself. And realistically, there's not that much more to add. So our final total was 980,000 US dollars. That's 766,000 British pounds or 890,000 euros. Now, my only issue here is that you are spending a million dollars on a 44 foot boat. Now, while the boat is solidly built, it doesn't have that much innovation. I am not overly happy with the way the cockpit is laid out and there are a few other niggles. But when it comes to value for money, I don't believe that this actually presents the best value for money. So we're going to award the Antares 44 GS a 3 out of 10. So that was the Antares 44 GS, the new incarnation of the Antares, which is a model that has been around for a while. So as we do with all of these reviews, we will start with the good points first and then move on to any potential negatives. I am going to say thank you to Beth. We've known Beth for a few years. And so thank you for being so kind and showing us your boats. Anyway, without further ado, I am not going to do much speaking today because apparently I talk too much. Uh, so over to Therese, good points about the 44. Uh, I think that there are many good points about the 44. Yep. I think that the build, build quality is fantastic yep. and they also do something that is uh, becoming increasingly rarer in catamarans which is to have real wood veneer and a real kind of boaty traditional feel yep. so that is if you want that then really I can't think of many options apart from the Antares it really is unique mm -hmm. and it is a an absolutely beautiful finish it's just it feels really lovely inside yep. um, the galley down is uh, sometimes a little bit controversial people get very upset about the idea of a galley down sometimes i think it is fantastic i really truly do that galley it is down but it doesn't feel like you're kind of down in the hull it's still so connected to all the different areas and because the ceiling above you is so high it feels still very spacious um, and not only that but you're benefiting from you know a lot of the length of the hull for the space for your galley so you're getting so much storage space so much bench space there's not really any compromises to making that galley you have everything that you need there yep. so i love the galley and also the ventilation in the cabins is really fantastic i feel like the ventilation in the saloon could be improved upon mm -hmm. i talked about that in the video uh, but in the cabins itself then you know it's five opening hatches you can't really beat that yep so there and the home position was good as well so there's a lot of good points yeah. so um very briefly um the fact that they're shaft drives absolutely fantastic yeah. they are super well built and if you are on a scale of zero to ten where zero is for charter and ten is for liverboard and not for charter this is like up there with a ten yes. it is firmly a liverboard boat there's no you know you would be crazy to charter one of these yes. um from my point of view if i wanted to do a circle navigation or some extended cruising in slightly difficult uh, areas as in you know it wasn't like you know sailing across the sea of abaco mm -hmm. Antares 44 would be very, very high on my list. So yeah, the plus points for the Antares, yeah, absolutely superb. Um, negative trees. Well, this is my difficulty with the Antares because it is not all perfect. And mm. there are some 
Um, there's no red lines, but there's enough compromises that make me feel like maybe Antares isn't the perfect boat for us. Mm -hmm. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, but we, we still need to think about that. But the cockpit is a real issue for me. And that it sounds maybe a little bit trivial, but I just <laughs> cannot imagine living comfortably in that cockpit you know we spend so much time in yeah. a semi-recumbent position where we're kind of leaning back against something with our legs up and our cockpit our current cockpit is perfect for that we've got like two kind of yeah. straight settees the you know traditional but let's talk about catamaran cockpits because we live in a monohull at the moment sure okay well, well yes indeed um but our cockpit is very comfortable yes, so is, you don't right. want to be kind of making compromise no, going right. to a catamaran yeah. and then having a less comfortable cockpit yep. uh, but yes exactly i think the antares is 44 foot and you look at any other catamaran that i can think of around the kind of 43 to 45 foot range and i can't think of another cockpit that has the same set of compromises but we read a lot about the cockpit and they say that it's designed so that it can drain super quickly but just about every other cut any other cockpit of any other catamaran we've reviewed could also drain super quickly yeah. if you were pooped if you had a wave over the back of it so yeah. that is uh, that's it's it's a nothing burger that i'm afraid yeah um okay so you don't like the cockpit what well, else well do you like the cockpit no i don't um but you know i'm gonna try and keep this brief as I <laughs> um I, no i don't i think uh, yeah let's uh, well keep Go on with any other negatives and then we can, I can summarise very briefly. Okay, so other negatives, um, I, I think that the price is very high. I uh, don't know whether it's uh, really worth just under a million dollars. Um, I think that they, they do offer a lot of features that yep. other catamarans don't. So that drives the price up, like the shaft drive. Yep. That is, that. I mean, there's a reason why no other catamarans, or very few other catamarans have shaft drives. It's because they're very expensive. So that is something that you pay for. You know, yep. that, that beautiful wood finish inside, you pay for that. Um, and also all the other components that make this this boat as you know high quality as it is yep. obviously you pay for all of mm -hmm. that so i guess this is a decision that you have to make yourself if you have the budget for a, an antares particularly a new one um so you're looking at just shy of a million dollars us do you want a 40 foot catamaran or do you want a bigger catamaran or do you want to save a little bit of money and have a different type of 44 foot catamaran yeah. so that's that's the thing i don't it's a very expensive catamaran i think for what it is i agree with you so there's a few things that i i'm going to just i agree with you on everything um firstly that cockpit i don't like the design i think it looks dated I think it is a dated cockpit and when we first saw the Antares 44 two years ago I still think wow this boat is amazing yeah. it's an amazing it's amazing definitely the wow boat factor. Yeah. since we've researched Caterans it still has the wow factor in its complete solidity as a mm. boat but it's just everything inside it looks dated and I do think that it's such a competitive market now not just in um, you know production cats but in the kind of niche markets yeah. you know the you know the the, the kind of custom cats that yeah. are being built in that sort of price bracket so you're mm. looking you know the, the performance cats the ultramares the sea winds but also the mavericks um you know the, well, the, the, you the can cruises. get a 50 foot nice now a very beautiful boat which we're yet to review for around the same price exactly and you've got 50 foot very well built yeah. catamaran and you know the 44 is an older design it is an older design yeah. and it's it's older and it what well, they probably haven't modified it that much but it no. works yeah and i had huge hopes when i found out they're bringing out a gs over to supersede the 44 i'm like this is going to address all the issues that we thought you know what you're, you you're almost there mm. and literally it's like in a race where you look at other manufacturers just coming up behind you and going actually we're going to steal that we're going to mm. use those designs and i, I just think that um grado sort of taken their eye off the board a little bit with this and i'm sorry to be harsh on them because you know beth is lovely but i just think they got a little bit lazy with their design and yeah, they're, they're I, trading I, on that reputation and i don't think you can trade on reputation anymore. i think the problem is that there is so much innovation and the market is moving so quickly and the the um people's tastes are moving on yep and i don't know whether um the antares as you say grado so that the um the company who built the boats I don't know whether they're keeping up with uh, market demand I don't and I think that, that actually 
shows itself, and this is just my own theory, but historically Antares, in the used market, used Antares um, catamarans have been snapped up very quickly. It's been, yeah. you know, you, you put an Antares on the market and they're sold very, very quickly. That's been one reason why uh, Antares cats have been considered a relatively good investment because they apparently hold their value very well because they're in such high demand. But I have been keeping a very close eye on the used Antares market over the past. Only because it's something we actually would consider. Absolutely, only because we love we yeah. love them so much. Um, over the past, particularly over the past 12 months, and there are boats on the market still that have been on the boat on the market for over 12 months now. Yeah. And the I don't believe that the demand for used Antares catam catamarans is the same as it used to be. I and I think that's because they're very expensive, even on the used market, mm -hmm. and they don't offer what people want now from a catamaran, which is you know, a slightly different design, a bit, a bit more modern, a bit more space inside. I mean, you look at the, the master hull, for example, that um, Ford shower room, and it's so small and cramped. And, you know, you've got oh. the toilet there, you have to kind of move around the toilet. And you look at um, any other 45 foot catamaran on yep. the market, and you do not have to make those those compromises. Well, we, there's, a, there's a 44, the Maverick 44, it's got a bath. <laughs> Indeed. In, in the same size category. Exactly. And it's three hundred thousand dollars yet less. So I think that you know Antares owners are a very passionate bunch. Of course they are, and we're going to we, get a load of blowback over uh, this. Well, I don't know about blowback, but I really want to hear from them because yeah. we've been in touch with quite a few Antares owners, and they are adamant that the Antares is the only catamaran that they would ever consider. So I uh, encourage anyone watching no. this, whether you agree with what we're saying or not, um, or maybe you disagree with some of it, um, then please leave a comment down below because this is a fantastic fantastic catamaran yeah, of course. and I think it is worthy of, of discussion because yeah My, I personally I think if Grado so got their finger out and modernized the look of it and addressed everything that we have come up with I think it would be unbeatable I just think they need to kind of not keep relying on their reputation because there are some hungry brands out there yeah. that are snapping up all the innovations. We've seen the innovations on the Balance 526 being yes. picked up by another company and they're all looking at things going, actually, that's good. I'm going to take that. I'm going yeah. to take that. And Grado's still like, nah, this is good. Yeah, and we're sticking with what we've got. Because, and you know, fair enough, it may work in the long term. For us, I think it's uh, this is not a, a, an, an era and a time to be sitting on your laurels. Because, you know, really, since we started looking at catamarans two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. things have changed. Oh, yeah. You know, you know uh, XS have got a catamaran coming out, Alubat have got a catamaran coming out, and you know, Uchimo have got new models coming out. They've all got all these things. And, and this are... is the thing, we've spoken to so many manufacturers, almost everyone is working so hard to get a piece of this ever-growing market. Yeah. And, and it's, it's becoming, and, it's and all these other catamaran manufacturers have other designs, either just improvements on their current uh, model, or, you know, a, a different model model entirely that they are working on and that they're trying to get to market as soon as possible and I don't think that Grado Sur are doing any of that to my knowledge. You snooze you lose. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway on that note listen you may disagree with us you may agree with us either way yeah, there is a huge know. huge voting system down yes. there it is massive we have almost 2,000 votes now so it is the biggest set of reviews on the market and if you think hang on you're biased or Nick you don't know what you're talking about or <laughs> Teresa you're beautiful, but yet you're misguided. <laughs> um, leave your vote down below because yeah. when we come to compile the final list of which is the best catamaran, it is your votes that yes. we are going to choose. Aside from that, we have more reviews coming up. There are lots to see from Annapolis as well as the 15 or so reviews we already have out. So we'll be back soon. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Goodbye. Bye.